Oh, hey, it's that Voyager episode with the guest star I completely forgot about until I just watched it, whose presence I will be seriously distracted by for this entire review. This is a review of the Star Trek Voyager episode Workforce, guest starring James Reed, who played George Hazard in the classic 1980s Civil War romance slash melodrama miniseries North and South. If you have not seen this episode and you don't want to know what happens in it, be warned. Spoilers beyond this point. I chose this episode to review at this time because of its labor-related themes and because of the ongoing WGA and SAG after a strikes, which I fully support. So I'm going to try real hard not to make this whole thing about James Reed being in it, but it's a struggle, guys. We open on Captain Janeway showing up for her first day of work at a big power plant or something located somewhere. She's out of uniform, but she doesn't seem bothered about it. She doesn't seem bothered about Voyager at all, really. When she speaks with her supervisor, she makes some passing reference to her old job, but that's about it. She seems optimistic, even enthusiastic about working here. This is her life now, and it's going to be great. Damn, when they chose to retool this show, they went all in, didn't they? After the credits, Janeway hits the wrong button on her control panel and almost triggers a core overload. She is saved by the intervention of Jaffin, played by James Reed, in a situation broadly reminiscent of the time when Reed, as George Hazard, came to the rescue of Ori Main, played, of course, by Patrick Swayze, who was being accosted by a gang of thugs at a train station in New York City while on his way to West Point, thus beginning a friendship that would survive decades of political and social turmoil, including the Civil War, and change both of their lives. While Janeway and Jaffin are introducing themselves to one another, they're interrupted by another familiar face, Seven of Nine, who introduces herself as Annika Hansen, the plant's new efficiency monitor. Seven reminds them sternly that there's no fraternization between employees allowed during work hours, so Janeway and Jaffin get back to work. Jaffin suggests they get together after work to fraternize instead, but Janeway begs off. She's got so much work. As the episode unfolds, we see yet more familiar faces. At a bar where the workers from the power plant like to hang out, we see Tom Paris successfully begging for a job as a waiter. Later at the bar, we see Tuvok hanging out with Jaffin and some others. Bellana shows up at some point as well. Then Janeway comes in to grab something to eat and Jaffin chats her up some more. The Voyager crew members seem to remember who they are, kinda. They're using their real names. When Janeway and Jaffin chat on the way home from the bar, she mentions being from Earth, but they don't remember Voyager at all, and some of what they do remember about their pasts seems wrong. Janeway's description of Earth doesn't at all resemble the utopian Federation world we've seen before on the show. She says different kinds of people don't get along, and there's a lot of violence, which makes it sound not unlike the United States during the Civil War, an era James Reed knows something about, having played one of the leads in three North and South miniseries. I seriously forgot he was in this. And you know the really spooky part? Like, two weeks ago, I finished a full watch-through of North and South, even the third one, which... I scheduled this review for this day over a month ago. Then I watched North and South for the first time in years. Then, today, I sit down to watch Workforce, and there's James Reed. And you're gonna tell me, what, that's just a coincidence? That's just a thing that happened that has no meaning? I think I believe in God now. The workers at the plant all have to get regular injections, inoculations against radiation exposure, so they say, but Tuvok doesn't take too well to them. He keeps having flashbacks to himself in his Voyager uniform getting injected with something by an evil doctor, and he finds this upsetting. Meanwhile, Chakotay, Harry, and Neelix return to Voyager after having been away for a few days on the Delta Flyer, and they find the ship totally abandoned except for the Doctor, who is operating in his emergency command hologram mode and doing his best to repair some pretty extensive damages. When Chakotay and Harry board the ship, 
in spacesuits at first because life support is off, the doctor explains that Voyager hit a mine that flooded the ship with dangerous radiation. The crew all left in escape pods to flee the exposure, and Janeway left the doctor in charge. Then another ship showed up, and the captain tried to claim Voyager for himself, so the doctor fought him off and took the ship to hide in a nebula, which is where Chakotay and Harry and Neelix found it. Let me just Cut to the chase here. The situation is pretty obvious, but the episode takes a long time revealing everything because they just really wanted it to be a two-parter, I guess. The radiation mine Voyager hit was a setup. When the crew abandoned ship, they were picked up by a ship from this planet, Quara, and taken to a hospital, ostensibly to have their injuries treated. While they were there, they also had their memories altered, so they forgot all about Voyager and, apparently, anything else that might make them want to leave Quara, and then they were put to work at the power plant. There's a labor shortage, you see. Skilled workers are hard to find. Harry locates the crew on Quora, Chakotay contacts a planetary official played by John Aniston, another luminary from 1980s TV, although he was not in North and South, so I don't care about him so much. But the official isn't helpful, so Chakotay has the doctor make him up to look like an alien, then he and Neelix head down to Quora and get jobs at the power plant. No problem, what with the labor shortage and all, in hopes of locating their crewmates and figuring out what's going on. Meanwhile, Janeway and Jaffin are getting closer. Janeway cooks dinner for Jaffin at his place, but she burns the whatever it is, so she says, forget it, let's just go out to the bar and throw down some sandwiches. But Jaffin stops her and says, how about I throw you that D instead? Oh, George, I thought you'd never ask. Chakotay makes contact with Janeway, but realizes that she has no idea who he is, so he's going to have to figure out some way of convincing her that she doesn't belong here with James Reed. She belongs on a spaceship with him and a hologram doctor and a giant talking cat. For now, Chakotay just plays along. Janeway sees him a little later sitting alone at the bar and invites him to come join her and her friends at their table. Chakotay politely declines, but asks what's the occasion. Janeway tells him, I'm moving in with Jaffin. Congratulations. Thanks. He throws me that good D. Chakotay and Neelix manage to grab Balana and beam her back aboard Voyager, but Voyager is attacked by Quarren ships and has to flee before they can beam up Chakotay. So he runs and hides in Janeway's old apartment and eventually gets arrested, but not before planting a seed of doubt in Janeway's mind. Chakotay talks to this detective guy, Urid, and manages to raise his suspicions that something fishy is going on at the power plant. Also, Tuvok mind melds with Seven of Nine right before being dragged away for another memory wipe, so now she's starting to realize something is wrong, too. Oh, and one of the doctors at the hospital who works for the evil doctor who is responsible for erasing everyone's memories, he starts to figure out that something's wrong as well. Lots of people figuring stuff out. Anyway, between the, however many of them there are, they eventually figure out what's been going on. Because of the labor shortage, Caden, the evil doctor, has been conspiring with officials in the Ministry of Health and the Department of Criminal Investigations to find and abduct people from outer space, bring them to Quora, and alter their memories so they can be productive workers at the power plant. Because, as Caden explains to his dismayed fellow doctor, the most dangerous public health threat facing their planet is the labor shortage. And the only cure for that is more workers. Back on Voyager, the doctor, with an assist from Neelix, has managed to restore Balana's memory. They're contacted by Janeway, who's looking for proof that what Chakotay told her is true. Harry and Balana, who Janeway recognizes as one of her fellow workers, tell her that she can have all the proof she needs once everyone is back on the ship. If she can shut down the planet's shield grid, they can beam all the Voyager crew back to the ship at once. 
Janeway goes to one of the consoles in the power plant and is trying to shut down the shield when she's attacked by security, but Jaffin shows up and saves her, much like how George and Charles rode up in the nick of time to save Madeline and the others from the clan at the end of the final episode of Heaven and Hell, North and South Book 3. Janeway shuts down the shield grid by intentionally triggering the same overload she almost accidentally triggered at the start of part one, and all the Voyager people are beamed up to safety. Later, while the doctor works on restoring everyone's memories, Harry talks with that unhelpful planetary official from earlier who is now extremely grateful to the Voyager crew for exposing this conspiracy to abduct workers for the power plant, a conspiracy which he knew absolutely nothing about and was the work of a small and specific group of people and not at all the fault of their society in general. Glad we cleared that up. Before Voyager leaves, Jaffin visits Janeway in her quarters one last time. His memory wasn't altered by the Quarrens, he tells her. He really did come here looking for work and a better life, and he found it. Since they lost a bunch of workers due to the exposure of the illegal abduction scheme, he's even been promoted. Jaffin gives Janeway one of the knickknacks she brought with her when she moved into his apartment, so she'll have something to remember him by but she embraces him and says, I don't need a souvenir. I'll never forget you and that good George Hazard D. The end. This was a frustrating episode, and not just because there's not even more James Reed in it than there is, or because it represents the one and only appearance of James Reed anywhere in the Star Trek franchise to date. Hey, Paramount, settle the strikes and cast James Reed in season three of Strange New Worlds as the ghost of Pike's dad. Thanks, fuckers. No, this is frustrating because other than the presence of James Reed, which is probably only this fascinating to me, there's not much else to be excited about here. The concept is promising, but as is unfortunately the case quite often on Voyager, that concept isn't realized in a way that fulfills that promise. The pace is too slow, things feel dragged out to fill out a two-parter, the plot is a mess, the script struggles to find meaningful things for the Voyager characters involved in the abduction-slash-memory-white plot to do, and the scene where all is finally revealed, where the evil doctor finally speaks about what he's doing and his motivations for doing it, does not involve any of our regular characters, just the evil doctor and the clueless good guy doctor. The story with Janeway and Jaffin is somewhat interesting. There's a poignancy to Janeway finding a happy life, settling down with this nice guy on a planet only to realize that it's all based on a lie and that her real life has been stolen from her. But Janeway doesn't have much agency for most of the story. None of the Voyager characters do, really. Eventually, they start to figure things out, but the heavy lifting is all done by guest characters, like the good guy doctor or Urid, the detective. Even Chakotay and Neelix, who go down to the planet to rescue their comrades, don't wind up contributing all that much. Chakotay gets arrested and plants the idea in Urid's head that something's wrong, but then Urid mostly takes it from there. Most frustrating of all, though, is how weak and offhanded the episode's political message is. This is a story about people being abducted and having their memories wiped so they can become happy employees for a massive company. They all think they're so lucky to have good jobs at a company that genuinely cares about them, and they've been literally brainwashed. But not only does the episode use this mainly as a plot device without considering the moral implications or the parallels with real-world situations, it dulls whatever edge the story might have had by making the abduction brainwashing plot the work of a small conspiracy of people rather than a product of a society with its priorities seriously out of whack. Like, at the end of the episode, it sure seems like everything on Quora is just fine now. The handful of criminals responsible for that terrible scheme to abduct and reprogram and exploit those workers have been caught, and we'll have no more of that. Back to business as usual, which is all good. It just has no bite, you know? 
There's one brief shot of Seven of Nine after her momentary mind meld with Tuvok when her memories are starting to break through. She looks down at the floor of the power plant, sees all the workers walking back and forth, and for an instant she flashes to a matching shot from a Borg cube. That image, equating the workers at the power plant with Borg drones, which lasts only for a second, is the sharpest bit of commentary in the entire two-part episode. Lots of potential, almost no follow-through. That's a shame. As much of a shame as the fact that James Reed hasn't been in more Star Trek. One random, not-so-good Voyager two-parter, and that's it. No more George Hazard in space. It's our loss. It's Starfleet's loss, really. George Hazard would have made a hell of an officer. I mean, hell, when you think how well his feckless brother Stanley did... Those are my thoughts on Workforce. What do you think of this episode? Please share your thoughts with me in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, and I sure wish you would if you can afford it, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash steveshives, becoming a channel member by clicking the join button, or by making a one-time gift by clicking the thanks button, or via PayPal or Venmo. Links are in the description. Please come back next week for another retro review when I conclude this batch of labor-themed reviews with a look at another Voyager episode, Author, Author. I'll see you next week for that. Thanks for watching, and take care, everybody.